<laughs> okay, so I have my friend Scott here. And we're going to talk about Love and Thunder, Thor, mm -hmm. Love and Thunder. We both Thor. we both saw it this weekend, yep. and we wanted to provide a quick reaction, kind of first thoughts and review after seeing it. So here we are now on a couch in a living room mm -hmm. uh, thinking about it. So, Scott, what did you, how did you feel about, about Thor, Love and Thunder? Yeah, I walked out overall thoroughly pleased with my, with my experience. Uh, I know this won't be everyone's favorite Marvel movie, or maybe not even their favorite Thor movie, because, I mean, it's very hard to top Thor Ragnarok. Everyone was just very pleased with that movie. But I walked yeah. out, a lot of a lot of humor and a lot of places, which I, which I, I mean, I was expecting that with Taka Waititi directing yeah. it. And the Thor that was, or the, the human that was present in the movie, I liked. Um... And with my expectations, especially with the, the trailers that they had, um, I feel like they didn't go, there was like some parts of the movie, some big parts of the movie that wasn't really. Did you um, watch all the trailers? trailers. Um, I, I at least watched one of the trailers. And by the way, yeah, so um, still. No spoilers. No though. spoilers, yeah. yeah, but still surprised with some stuff in there. And yeah. Enjoyed it. I will say I was surprised with. Christian Bale, I thought... I mean, how could Christian Bale do a bad job? I didn't think he would do a bad job. Yeah, he can't. And I think he really stepped into the role. I love how kind of, like, kooky and maniacal he got by the end of it. Um, and I think... For, so, for me, I thought that there was a lot of humor played into it. And I think some of it was, like, super, like, targeted on the nose. Like, really kind of schlocky. For the purpose of trying to draw out a lot of laughs. And by the end of it, I was kind of surprised that it was still like carrying that the whole time. So, which I shouldn't be that surprised, I guess, from Taika with TV. I think that's kind of a similar note from like James Gunn is they love carrying that through thread of like, don't take this seriously. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, it's all in good fun. Um, so, yeah, I think that was a pretty interesting line that he tiptoed back and forth between like the drama and again, there's like a really big part of the movie that's hard to not talk about, but in order to have a fresh experience going in, it's better for us probably not to mention what happens yeah. to one of the, you well, know, one of the, uh, one of the main characters in the movie. Would you say I, uh, Christian Bale was a top what, Marvel villain? Was a standout? Was yeah. a top Marvel villain? Yeah, overall. I like, I like, uh, Malekith. From Thor: The Dark World. Really? Yeah. Now you want to find many people. I'm not saying like, you want to find many people saying that. Interesting. No. Um, I would think yeah, maybe besides um, like um, I think Thanos is probably Obviously, the top, top yeah, tier. Yeah. He's got tier. I would sure. say besides him, I really can't think of um. Like maybe Hydra question mark? Yeah, I would put Hydra top because like, they Hydra just kind of exist, yeah. but it's always been a few different people. Um, so it's hard to like pinpoint that on someone. Mm -hmm. I liked Zemo in Civil War. He was good. I think what they ended up doing with him in Falcon and the Winter Soldier was interesting too. He, they didn't make him like super complex, but they made him not shallow. So yeah, I mean, I think the way that I mean, immediately when the when this movie starts, it is really. Like, the first 10 minutes of it kind of spell it out for you because they have an opening scene and they have an immediate hard transition into what comes after that and to setting up another part of the story. And it's like, I felt like it was night and day from like, man, you're opening on something wrong. I mean, they open on Gore, the, the God Butcher, Christian Bale's character, and in a very uh, somber, mm -hmm. in a very like, you know, character building kind of uh, scene. And then, you know, the good old Taika Waititi breaks in. So that, yeah. if, if once you get five, ten minutes in, you'll that's what you should expect, like, for the rest of the flick. I think it was, like, it kind of laid out what, what it was going to balance. It was going to be balancing Christian Bale, you know, his performance. Then it was going to bring the rest of the kind of, you know, the, the schmuckiness that everyone liked in Ragnarok. That was, like, just the lightheartedness of it. And I, it was pretty short too maybe yeah it was it was like maybe an hour and a half maybe a little bit over an hour and a half it was a little bit over a little bit over but it wasn't it wasn't yeah. like just like with these past marvel movies that are usually like kind of longer oh dude i know it yeah. was such a good break that oh, was like was, the, was i like that i like that i think 
There's, like it wasn't short enough. It wasn't short enough to where like you walked out like that was way too short a movie. Like I, I feel like I didn't get enough. Money. Like how there might be some like missing yeah. from it maybe. Yeah, but I feel like yeah. it was just good, good length. A good length. Yeah, yeah. I think I can't really piece together what would be maybe incomplete uh, if there was, but yeah, it seemed pretty. Like where the where the characters ended up at the end of the story and what happened, it seemed like you know that was the natural progression. Like nothing mm -hmm. really was too you know cut short and nothing was like drawn out you know where you're like oh, i know where this is going for yeah. the whole movie yeah um but yeah i mean this makes me especially with how this movie ends on a very high note for me um mm -hmm. with just the characters that you see ending the film it makes me very excited to see where um you know where uh the characters in this story take place next and where they show up next yeah they, I think I think that was one of the best kind of like uh, maybe jumping pads. I didn't. Yeah. Th I think this was great because it didn't have to feel like an event movie. Maybe. Yeah. And yeah. I think the other ones tried to feel like maybe event movies. You know. Like I feel like um, people aren't really excited for the next phases of MCU because they feel like the heavy hitters for the Marvel universe has been come and gone. But yeah, for this one it kind of makes you more excited about what could be yeah. in the future. Yeah. For the MCU. What What are your final thoughts for what you've seen out of the MCU Phase Four, Five? What are we on Phase Four? Uh, I think I think we're on Phase. Four. Let's say we're on Phase Four. Where were your final thoughts and where you would place this so far versus other movies that have come out from Marvel? Yeah, uh, uh, for this phase. Yeah, yeah, for the phase. Yeah. yeah. So I guess um, like Black Widow, Spider Man, yeah. Doctor Strange. So I would put. I Marvel's. mean, Spider Man was just you know that was that was just good. I'll put it top tier. Spider-Man's number Marvel. one. And then um, uh, Doctor Strange got a lot, got a little bit of hate, I feel like. I thoroughly enjoyed that movie. Yeah, yeah, and you did like I that. did. I liked that movie. But uh, I think I would put Thor uh, a little bit above the Doctor Strange movie. So I would put Spider-Man, Thor, Doctor Strange, and then Black Widow. No love for four. Eternals. Uh, I don't <laughs> mind that. I don't mind Eternals that. Is at, at the at the bottom of the list. Um, actually, I'd put yeah, I'd put it at the bottom. Even though I, I I liked it, I would just still put it at the bottom of those movies, or maybe above Black Widow. But uh, and I'm not really counting the shows. If I had to count the shows, I'm not it, counting the shows. Yeah, I I want to count the shows except Loki. Loki's a good show. Oh yeah, Loki yeah, is Loki, a good show. Loki is Loki your favorite or or yes. one division? I assume it's one Loki. Of the two. Is my favorite MCU. Yeah, I think because it opened the door for so much more storytelling. I loved Loki far. as well, and this can mm -hmm. also be the Loki story because, um, I mean, he didn't show up in this movie, so yeah, no, no one, I don't think he should show up. No in one was expecting him to, mm -hmm. and if you've been following, you know, chronologically, it w would it make sense for him to show up in this movie? No, and for what this movie was trying to do. It, it wasn't the, uh, you know, previous Marvel movies that was the character bash and everyone all at once. Uh, so that's why it felt good for this one to be kind of more self-contained. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, funny that Loki would come up. But I yeah. felt like he was a lot of heart that was brought from Ragnarok. Um, so, but, yeah, I also love his show. I would say if, he, if I were to place just that show... And the rest of the, you know, conversation with the movies, mm -hmm. that's one of the top projects right now, I think, I that Marvel's come out with. Yeah. So, um, Thor Love and Thunder, go see it. It's not trying to be anything you don't think it is. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's just a fun right. time, straight up, quick in and out. Nothing too, um, you know, dramatic. No, yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, it doesn't take itself too seriously. No. Which, I think, you want which, it, right, yeah. right. Which yeah. we can enjoy more of that in the MCU, I feel like. We don't, yeah. we don't see a lot of that, so. No, we don't. Yeah. Let us know what you think in the comments. Exactly. Or, or, yeah, we're, yeah, we want to hear your yeah. opinion. You stole my line. Yeah. Okay. See you guys in the next one. Thank you, Scott. My, my pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure, too. <laughs>